On November 20th of 1953, Scott Crossfield became the first man to fly at Mach 2. Chuck Yeager followed and beat his record and hit Mach 2.44 on December 12th of 1953, on a flight that nearly killed him. I'm Amy Shearer Title, and today on Vintage Space, we're talking about Chuck Yeager's wild ride in the X-1A. The X-1A was a second-generation X-1, also built by Bell, that marked a few differences from its predecessor. Its designers predicted the aircraft could break Mach 2.5, but it was known to be unstable at high speeds. But Jaeger, famed as an intuitive pilot, decided to take the plane to its limits anyways. When Jaeger first took the X-1A out, he only hit a top speed of Mach 1.5 on a familiarization flight. His second time in the X-1A, he hit a peak of Mach 1.9. His big run to beat Mach 2 came on December 12th of 1953. Things started normally with the X-1A nestled beneath a B-29 launch plane. At 32,000 feet and traveling around 210 miles per hour, the X-1A fell away. Jaeger lit chambers 4, 2, and 1 of his rocket engine to reach Mach 0.8. He climbed to 43,000 feet and lit chamber 3 to accelerate to Mach 1.1. Then he continued to climb and increase his speed. At his peak of 76,000 feet, he hit Mach 1.9. He hit a top speed of Mach 2.44 when the engines cut out, and here's where things started to get a little bit dicey. The plane first went into a Dutch roll, a combination of pitching and yawing oscillations, then started rolling sharply to the right. This right roll ended when the plane was upside down, and then it started rolling sharply to the left. The violent tumbling exposed Jaeger to some intense G-forces. Inside the cockpit, he pulled as many as 8 Gs and felt a negative force of 1.3 Gs, and a sideways force of 2 Gs. It was enough that he slammed his head against the canopy and actually cracked it. The X-1A lost about 50,000 feet in just 70 seconds. But at 25,000 feet, it entered into a normal roll, and Jaeger was able to regain consciousness and regain control of his aircraft. No one except Jaeger knew what had happened to the X-1A. Chase pilots lost radio contact with Jaeger, and Jaeger didn't come back on the radio until he regained control at 25,000 feet. And amazingly, he sounded fine and started cracking jokes. After that fall and roll, he said, there was no need to run a structure demonstration on that airplane. Amazingly, the X-1A sustained no damage in the flight, except for that cracked canopy where Jaeger's head hit it and some damage to the pitch and yaw indicators. To put this context into story, check out the post on Vintage Space linked in the About box below. And for Vintage Space updates every day of the week, follow me on Twitter as ASD Vintage Space. And don't forget to subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.